So in other videos on rootkits, I talked about the idea of using hooking. And in the case of user mode rootkits, uh, the idea of hooking what we call the import address table. Uh, and that, now hooking actually represents, in my mind, just one way to modify uh, the path in which instructions are executed and specifically allows the rootkit to execute the code uh, that it wants to execute. Now, now I think that hooking the, the import address table does have some drawbacks. And first of all, it turns out that it can be quite easy to detect. And second of all, it is limited to operating system API functions. And since, especially since it's information about these functions uh, that are imported in the import address table. And also, as I mentioned in the video on IAT or import address table hooking, you have to worry about the fact that DLLs would get called uh, in a way that might bypass the import address table. And so for these reasons, one very popular rootkit technique is to directly modify code rather than modifying a table that that code actually points to. And you can think of this technique as essentially inline hooking or um, inline function patching, since you're actually directly modifying code inline, so to speak. And, and one of the terms that actually it's used to describe inline function patching is the term detours. Okay. And, and you'll see why in a moment, but I want to kind of point, put, out, put that out there. And really, this is about uh, direct code modification more than anything else. A direct code modification. Now, I'm going to describe how this works. And, and actually, let me start off by chalking out kind of the standard uh, preamble for a uh, Windows uh, Win32 function. Uh, and, and actually, don't worry if you don't understand assembly language. I'm, and what I'm really trying to do is, is to be true to the underlying details, but you don't need to understand them fully to understand the overarching concepts. So it looks kind of like this. Um, so you would have uh, some code bytes. Okay, and I'll tell you what the actual, uh, the corresponding assembly code would be here for those bytes. So um, the code bytes are, are basically 8, B, um, F, F and I'll make it uppercase to be consistent. APFF and the corresponding assembly code is it's a move instruction, uh, and this may seem kind of odd to you at first, but I'll I'll go into a bit about why this is the case. But basically, it's uh, moving EDI to itself. It's actually kind of a dummy instruction. Um, fifty-five or five-five, and uh, that uh, corresponds to push uh, EBP, uh, and then we have um, eight B EC. And uh, that corresponds to a move of uh, EBP ESP. Now, the main thing to note here is that it takes five bytes to represent this code. And, and these are the five bytes. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, byte one, byte two, byte three, byte four, and byte five. Now, what the rootkit is going to do, and, and let's say this is a, uh, a Windows 32 function, and, and by the way, actually all Windows 32-bit functions, at least post uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2, start this way. So this is a kind of very standard preamble. Now, what the rootkit's going to do in this technique of, of direct code modification is it's going to go ahead and replace these five bytes uh, with a single jump instruction, which actually takes up one byte, as well as a four byte address. So imagine replacing this with, with a, a jump um, and it will have a, a 32 bit address or a four byte address. Uh, and specifically, we're going to jump to, to an area that we call a detour. We're going to take a detour, so to speak. And uh, the, uh, the address, or, or if you want to write this in assembly, would be basically E9, which is a jump instruction. Then you'd have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of bytes, basically four more bytes that represent uh, 32 bits, and then that would represent the Windows Win 32-bit address space. And this is where you could possibly go. But now let me kind of tell you what this means in English. What, what's going to happen now is if this API were called, let's say this is a Windows 32-bit API, um, instead of now executing this code, we're going to take this jump, and the path is going to effectively take a detour. Okay? So instead of, instead of going and executing the original code, we're going to, we're going to take a detour. Uh, so imagine here is the detour code. Okay, now actually what, one thing I do want to mention is that prior to this point, um, b before you actually, uh, before the, the code is overwritten uh, by the rootkit, uh, 
uh, one of the first things the root is going to do is it's going to take these five bytes, and even though they're standard, let's just kind of uh, imagine uh, that uh, uh, they need to be written anyway, and they're going to be written to a special place called a trampoline. Okay, just kind of being stored for future reference. Okay, so these these five bytes. This is kind of the A B F F uh, five five uh, eight B E C. These are going to be written to a trampoline. Okay, and so now when the API is going to be called, we're going to jump and we're going to take this detour path. And the detour itself is where you might have actually like some real malicious code. So you can imagine this is really where the, the bad malicious code uh, resides. And then um, as part of the detour, the detour uh, might execute some malicious code. And then it may be, you know, it might actually call the trampoline. Maybe it'll actually call um, the trampoline in order to be ensure that it's going to maybe execute some parts of the target function. Okay, and, and this is really the target function, the original function you were calling. Uh, and, and, um, and then it's going to, um, uh, so we'll have the trampoline. After the trampoline, you might actually, I guess, pass control back so the detour, uh, so you can kind of think of this as you know step one, step two, step three. Okay, and then in step four, um, the detour code might actually call the original target function, the original function that was uh, being replaced, and that was really the the function that we talked about here, this kind of original function. Okay, uh, and really the, the code that kind of goes past this point in the original function. So the original function is being called. Okay. And then in step five, uh, control is going to be passed back here to, uh, to where we were. And then maybe some additional post-processing is done. And then finally, uh, we're going to return back control to, to kind of where we left off just before we, we took this jump. So we're going to kind of return code control back here in step six. Okay, so kind of this is where we left off. Where we left off. The main thing to kind of keep in mind is that the patching here is conveniently done so that the rootkit gets to kind of interfere with the execution path. And really during this time, during all these, these steps, the rootkit can effectively modify the results of the execution path to perform a degree of, of surgical incision, if you will. And, and really this is where it kind of removes any evidence that might point to the rootkit's presence on the system. So what's happened is, is that it modified this one line, it, it took these five bytes, stored them in a trampoline, modify those five bytes, replaced them with a the jump instruction so that when this, this code was executed, instead of taking the real original code path, you took a detour, executed some malicious code, then kind of went ahead and, and, and you know, called the stuff that, uh, that was there before, so use the trampoline to kind of call the original code, the original function, which is really represented by, by this. Uh, and then finally did some post-processing before returning control back to where we were before. Um, this is really all about uh, modifying the execution path, doing something malicious in that time, and then returning back to where you were before. And, and I, I, I do want you to make one last remark in closing, which is that the way I've described it, it might seem a little bit too easy, you know, especially the part about the function kind of really conveniently having a five byte preamble and the jump instruction needing exactly five bytes. And while the numbers in real life don't always add up so nicely, it, it turns out actually that in many cases they actually do add up that nicely. And in fact, that's done on purpose. The reason that this approach is done on purpose is that it turns out that this same approach that I've described here is what um, allows for what Windows calls hot patching. That is the ability to run updated code without requiring a system reboot. In fact, if, if you've ever done a Windows update and you haven't had to reboot your system, it's because of a, the same mechanism, this kind of detour and trampoline mechanism. And, and I wanted to point that out because in many instances, and especially so when it comes to, to rootkits, there's a tendency to kind of conflate the technique that's being used with the manner in which it's being used, the actual intent of that technique. And, and it, there's a tendency to think that if you've got a very powerful technique, like, like using detours, you know, it can be used actually for both benign and malicious purposes. In other words, it's not like this technique can only be used for bad things. A lot of these techniques can be used for both good and bad things. It just happens that rootkits try to use them for bad things. Anyway, I hope that made some sense and I'm gonna kinda cut this video right here. Uh, but really the, the idea was to show you one more technique named the inline function patching or detours which involve direct code modification and it's another way for a rootkit to execute uh, code by interfering with the actual code execution path on a system.